This conference will now be recorded. From Raleigh, Durham, North Carolina, and Melbourne, Australia, we'd like to welcome you to Startup Masters. Hi, I'm your host, Nick Palavita, and along with my co-host, Kim Calhoun, who's also Hi, in the Raleigh. Everyone. It is also in the Raleigh Durham area. We bring a very special guest from down under in Melbourne, Australia, mate, Willie Hill. Willie Hill, welcome to the show. Willie, welcome. Oh my God, you're like one of my most favorite people. Yeah, yeah. And, and, and you're heavy into startups. Willie, tell us how are things in uh, Melbourne? Beautiful Melbourne, by the way. Good morning, Kimberly. Good morning, Nick. How are you? We're doing great. I'm, doing great and I'm so excited to see you on any day but Friday. Yeah. <laughs> uh, yes, I, I'm in Melbourne, Australia. Melbourne is a very cosmopolitan city. Mm. Um, we've been ranked as the most livable city for like three, four, five years in a row. Wow. wow. And that speaks something for itself. Uh, mm -hmm. It has a very great infrastructure. Mm -hmm. Like most big cities in Australia, it's very startup friendly. Right. Uh, the startup yeah. ecosystem is really nurtured by the Australian government. Oh, uh, really? That's good. Both at the federal level and mm -hmm. at the state level. Right. So it's very competitive. Mm -hmm. um, each state has has their own startup uh, ecosystem. Mm -hmm. Right. Uh, New South Wales. Uh, Victoria and also Queensland. Uh, it's very competitive. Mm -hmm. Oh, so well, let me um, ask you this: If each one has yes. its own startup ecosystem um, and is very competitive, like in business, but do you guys compete against the ecosystems? Like, do you have little competitions, startup competitions? I have yet to see that. Um, yesterday, I just drew up a list of the accelerators. Um, or the best accelerators, top 25 accelerators. And they spread right across uh, Australia, um, mm -hmm. from Queensland down to even Tasmania's listed in there. Right. Um, and yeah, but comp uh, startup competition, I have yet to see. Mm -hmm. You know, that could be something that, um, you know, you can even arrange using what we do with Pod TV, where you line them up and you let the people yes. Uh, vote on them right so yep. that would be very very interesting especially if you've gone to this ecosystem and nick um you know you're looking for a place to live and this might be a great place yeah i was thinking, thinking maybe i can just move to australia we're, we're showing a beautiful view of the downtown skyline wow. in, in uh, melbourne which uh, i was like shocked to see how big and beautiful that skyline is but you got a really nice place there uh that was well, like, that yeah was, um how did you, so you're an entrepreneur, right? Mm -hmm. Yes. I've had uh, two startups. I had five, six, six startups. Um, a lot of them fell face in, down into the ground, mm -hmm. mainly because when I did the startups, it wasn't like how it's structured nowadays. Right. Uh, the startups I had was like in 2005, 2007. Mm -hmm. And then I, from there, I moved into film production. I went into oh. film production, uh, TV yeah. production. Wow. And when I was in that space and I looked across and I saw, wow, uh, we're very similar to startups. Uh, we do pitch. We have mm -hmm. to get our content together. Right. And we put teams together. And there were a lot of similarities. So that's when I sort of, okay, let's go back here and see what, what's happening in this space. Mm hmm and yep, and and now you had the what I see is the largest group of startups uh, in on Facebook in Australia. You have thousands of members, probably over seven thousand members right now. Would that be correct? Yes, uh, I'm also the admin for other startup groups. Yeah, I saw that. Australian based. <laughs> right, they're not, yeah, Australian -based. Yeah. <laughs> they're not Australian based. You're like worldwide. Yes. So I think that's just really cool. So tell us a little bit about what you're doing in that space. I mean, you've got some media background, you've got entrepreneurship yep. background. You've already figured out you can pull them together, just like mm -hmm. Nick and I did. So yeah. tell yep. us what you're doing. Okay. So the thing I've been always uh, enthralled me was uh, the reality format. They had mm -hmm. they have a huge drawing capacity, 
you right. know, uh, I mean, just look at Google Box. Google Box and this, all is talking about others, other mm -hmm. reality formats or whatever else is happening in the reality space. So I said, okay, reality format would be a good marketing platform for startups. Right. You know, you come on there and you pitch what you're doing. Um, so, and we've also seen Shark Tank and Dragons mm -hmm. Den. Right. So, after watching a few of those episodes, I said the the way it was structured or the way it was formatted, it was totally in favor of the uh, TV network that was hosting right. it. Right. Uh, so the TV networks brought in their sharks, mm -hmm. um, which were experienced entrepreneurs, but it was skewed to where the sharks wanted it. It was not skewed to where the startups and the problems that they were facing. So I said, okay, I'm gonna turn all of this around and let's focus on the startup, all the problems that he has. Um, one big rate, high rating uh, reality format that we have in Australia is the block. It's a renovation or build renovation. And, and in there, they sort of totally focused on the blockheads as they're building. So I said, okay, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to take that and put it into the startup space. Mm -hmm. And yeah, so that that was my focus. Let's focus on the startups, uh, the problems that he's going through, the tantrums and, you know, the disappointments that he face. And right. so that's where I'm at. That's what I'm focusing on. Well, well, you know what we, we, we could we could also do is we could actually have the startups on IBM TV uh, and then that we can have international exposure because, uh, Kim, have you seen any shows in the United States with um, startups in Australia? No, not not even um, reality TV shows, right. for startups. I mean, yeah. I'm talking about like what Willie's talking about. Let's get the let's get the startups live. Let the viewers like what you and I've been working on, but just get this ball going. Let the viewers dial in while it's live and vote on them, invest in them and build them, build that ecosystem for the startup, but also help the startup get some better ideas, right? Because some startups, they might be going good, but they need a little more help in understanding yeah. what the market wants, right? Right, right. No, I agree with you, Nick. We we need something like this, and especially yeah. In well, I mean, at the University of Miami, we as I told Willie, we take your basketball players; they come over <laughs> here. You know, we take your football players; they come over here. Well, what about your startups? Well, well they travel over here, and I've traveled over Australia. It's a twenty-four hour flight from Miami. It's not not like you're going next door. But the thing is, through the internet, we could transport them instantaneously here and also all over the world. So we'd love to see Startup Australia and uh, meet some of the startups on our television show. So is that a possibility, Willie? That is a possibility. Um, mm -hmm. The other thing that sort of been brought to my attention is the failure rate for startups. Oh, startups yeah. Startups have a high failure rate. Mm -hmm. So what, what I'm looking at is, okay, how can we build resilience? Yeah. Startups? Well, well you, you know, see, see my, my thinking with a lot of startups, I mean, they need capital for sure, but they also need yep. marketing and distribution. Marketing and distribution are so important. Like, and, yep. and I've started... I've started probably four or five businesses that became million dollar, multi-billion dollar businesses. But, you know, what you do is once you hit that distribution, then you're good to go. But without the distribution, it doesn't matter how good your product is. It doesn't matter how good your people are. You're going to fail. I mean, it's you just have the exposure. Yeah, you have that exposure. I call it the big D, baby, the big D. And a lot of people yep. don't know what the big D is. It's distribution. And so what we're doing here at IBM TV, we're saying, okay, let's say you have a startup. You got a great team over there, great products over there. But let, let's face it, the if they just go from city to city, I mean, you go to Perth, Sydney, yep. you know, Brisbane, uh, Karen, Jularu, uh, you know, then yep. you're done. And you have like 34 million people, which is the size of California over here, yep. and not even yep. not even the size of New Delhi, which we found out the other day, one city in India. And so your product is limited as to the distribution. When you hit the internet and IBM TV, our distribution potentially is 4.3 billion people. 
So now wow. the product has a huge distribution network. And uh, just the other day, there was a, a series for, with a guy named Ken Burns on country music here in the United States and, and Nashville. And they go, oh, Nashville is great. What made Nashville was not country music. What made Nashville, if you listen real carefully, to the show was a transmitter, a 50,000 watt transmitter, which was 10 times more powerful than any other one in the United States that could distribute music coast to coast, seriously, in the 1950s. Okay, so that distribution point made Nashville. It had nothing to do with the music. You know, I'm sorry, it had nothing to do with the, not nothing to do with the singers. It had to deal with one thing, a transmitter that went back then when radio was it, went all over the country. And so you could hear Nashville if you're in California, if you're in Maine and places in between, where if you went to your local radio television, your local radio show, you could only hear it in your county or your only little city. So yes. what, what, what our plan is this, okay, no matter what global, no matter what television program you're on in Australia, I think there, because we looked at this distributing through Australian one, Australian two, I'm limited to Australia. Nobody in Pakistan are you're going to see see what your your um, products are. When I go to IBM TV, I see it in Africa, Nepal, um, you know, Indonesia, uh, United right. States. I mean, you get a global. In Africa that says, "Wow, I can use that product. I can use right. that." Technology. Yeah, exactly. And and I, I and and even the companies I've seen, we take off only when we hit the big D distribution. If you don't have distribution, you don't have a lock on distribution. I don't I don't care. You can have the best team, the best product. You could be have the best funding, but your product, you, you know, you're going to fail. And that's my you know, 20 cents for today. Really that's that's, that's my soapbox on bro. You talked Absolutely. about the failure rate in the startup ecosystem in your country. In our country, it's about 85%. Yeah, it's about the same. And, you know? um, and you know, distribution is one thing. But the other one that I discovered, and you could read my book, um, I talk about this a little bit, because there's always more than one factor. And it's not about not getting sure. enough money. It's about getting the right money. And all too often in the, the startup ecosystem, you have investors that come in and they go, you know what, I'll invest in you, but take less money and make this happen. If you are good at what you do and you did your research and your homework, that is not the investor to go with, to ask you to take less, cut corners, do less quality, or potentially having to go out and raise money all the time instead of running your company and building a product or getting distribution out there, paying for the distribution, because you have to pay to distribute. It's expensive. It's a thousand dollars a minute for us. Oh, that's, on, for, that, that's for television, but there's yeah, other but forms. I'm just saying, but, even in, in business, I had to hire uh, advertising. When I ran a phone company, yeah. when I looked at my spreadsheets, <laughs> my costs were majority of marketing and sales. Mm -hmm. The yep. initial cost, uh, uh, don't get me wrong, it's like buying the horse, right? Buying that horse looked expensive. It, it, it cost me twenty, thirty thousand dollars for that horse. But maintaining that horse, feeding that horse, showing that horse to win money cost me a lot of money every month. And that's the way I kind of look at a startup is, is like buying that horse. You get everything built and product built, but you got to maintain it. You got to get it out there, show it, mm -hmm. um, get the and, and get the people interested in what you're doing, and you got to win. And that's horse shows are like that. You got to win if you're going to bring the money back home. And I guess I learned a lot in uh, the horse show world when my son was a, a, a rider. And, and and it took me a long time to understand this concept. Uh, but we always say you spend more on the horse. You think you spend more on the horse. That's not true. You spend more on distribution and marketing and maintaining. So I mean, just um, put that in your cap when yep. you're dealing with yep. these startups and making a list of things that, so th if there's distribution is very important, getting the right money, the right, mm -hmm. you know, the right money. Don't settle for less because you're just, you're not going to go anywhere. That's why a lot of them fail is they'll settle for less, take anything they can get and they don't, they, they can't make it work. So, you know, don't be desperate. If you get desperate, you're going to make mistakes, right, Nick? Yeah, absolutely. Yeah, that's true. And, and what's the name, Willie, of, of the um, your Facebook page? Is it Startup Australia, or if people want to Australian join? Australian Startup it? Club. Australian, Australian Startup Startup Club. Club. Okay, right. And you also have a couple. Awesome. 
talk about this really if let's get you started let's get your yeah. your hub started let's get that people coming to you how would right. you like yeah. for them to contact you um there's a contact um through facebook mm -hmm. and through linkedin i've got right. uh, I'm, I'm on both those two social media sites right um, now now, yeah. th now now that's australia startup club but you have a couple others what are the others that you also have yes i'm also the admin for indonesia startup club indonesia startup club how do you happen oh, to get a hold of that i know that that, that's 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 You're a not big. Just in your country, you you. Okay, okay. Well, I want to talk about Indonesia, but, but because that's a big country, they have like three hundred million people up there. Absolutely. No, yeah. when the startup club first opened, um, right. the guy that opened startup clubs all over the world on sure. Facebook, I said, okay. I, so I told him, let me admin Australia and uh, Indonesia because they're close, mm -hmm. and mm -hmm. so that's how I got them back in two thousand and nine. Really? Okay, so you actually admin. Indonesia, which has 300 million people, and Australia, yes. which has 30 million people. <laughs> so, yep. so, okay, both of those. Okay, any other startup clubs that you? Uh, I admin for Europe B two B startups. Europe B two B startup. Okay, great. Yes. Okay, wow. Good. Now, yes, Europe, Europe, Europe has about 400 million people, just to <laughs> give, give you an idea. It's pretty big, but uh, it's also pretty competitive. But if people want to, to join these startup clubs, they can go to Facebook and join these, right? Yes, yes. Okay, and then they get a hold of you. Yep. Okay, that, great. That's uh, very important to understand is how to reach out to you so that you can start getting the traction going with the people that yep. would be interested in doing this with you. And mm -hmm. you know, really, we, we're here to help. That's what Nick mm -hmm. and I do. So when you get this, when you're ready to go, we just, we just launched a new um, pod TV show last night and it was very exciting. Mm -hmm. And you know, you're going to run into problems. And this is what I tell people when you're launching these is don't be afraid of the mistakes, kind of eat them up, and move on. I mean, sometimes people, yes. People enjoy watching the mistakes, not because they enjoy watching you fail, but because they make mistakes. And they go, oh, wow, that's pretty cool. You know, they had issues too. So, <laughs> you know, Nick and I learned too, like the biggest guy in Fayetteville that has a YouTube, who, who is it, Nick, the guy in Fayetteville? Uh, they had a, a YouTube, oh, I, I forgot his name, but, but he had. But anyway, the, re the way he got millions and millions of viewers was he was oh, right. watching up his intro every right. single time. And then people got into watching him messing up his intro. Right. And then right. he just like, you know, screw it. I'm just going to, every time I open, yeah. and I want to tell you what, you know, Willie, Nick is talented and skilled at intros. That's a skill. That is something you have to practice. I don't care what anyone says. Opening a show, you may think it's three simple sentences. It's not. It's how you pitch it. It's how you throw it. Um, and, and the more you practice it, well, the more I practice it, the worse I get. So, um, so that's one I, of the things you know. I, I, I don't like to that. do. I noticed that. It's all. That it, it's all about Nick practice. Was really smooth coming out at the beginning. Uh, smooth. Yeah. Then, <laughs> then, 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 what happened? Is that the thing? Uh, ah. Yeah, he's smooth when it comes out in the beginning. Yeah, and then, ah, okay, then but yeah. That's, in the, that's in what the makes it fun. Then we get Nick. Yeah, then you get then you get me. We'll get, wait till they get a load of me. But anyway, the thing is, we're running out but of time what now. I call so. That? What? The power no. of power positive thinking. We're running out of time now, but we do want to thank Willie Hill um, from the Australian Startup Club, and the, and you want to go find him and follow him on Facebook. You have to wade through thousands of members, and of course, thank uh, Kim Calhoun, and thank all our our viewers on Startup Masters, and um, I guess we'll see you guys next time. All right. We'll see you next time. Okay. Thank you. See you guys. <laughs> okay.